Good morning, everyone. The flood danger from this storm is more immediate today than when it was, than when it made landfall just 24 hours ago. We face walls of water at our coast, along our rivers, across farmland, in our cities, and in our towns. More people now face imminent threat than when the storm was just offshore. I cannot overstate it. Flood waters are rising, and if you aren't watching for them, you are risking your life. I have several important warnings this morning. First, to the people who have evacuated, if you are safe, stay put. We know that people are anxious to get back home. But don't go back until this storm passes and you get the official all clear. Second, know that the water is rising fast everywhere, even in places that don't typically flood. This system is unloading epic amounts of rainfall, in some places measured in feet and not inches. Many people who think that the storm has missed them have yet to see its threat. Residents of Charlotte, Asheville, Fayetteville, Statesville, the Southern Piedmont, the Sand Hills, the mountains. Rivers will rise days after the rain has stopped. In the east, they will crest Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Remember, most storm deaths occur from drowning in fresh water, often in cars. Don't drive across standing or moving water. Emergency management is sharing flood projections with local officials. If they tell you to evacuate, please do so immediately. It could save your life. The storm has claimed numerous lives already. Five deaths have been confirmed as related to the storm, and several others are under investigation. Loss of life is heartbreaking, and we'll continue to pray for the victims and their family. And every hour, first responders are preventing more deaths. We now have a little over 20,000 people in 157 shelters with room for more. If those shelters fill up, we will establish more shelters. More than 800,000 people throughout the state are currently without power, and utility crews are beginning to work now to restore electricity to people. Overnight and into this morning, more rescues are continuing across eastern North Carolina. We are so grateful to these rescue teams who risked their lives to save others. And they have come from all over the country to work with our local, state, and federal partners. Recovery teams are now ready with new authorization from FEMA. Last night, our major federal disaster declaration where an initial round of counties was approved. That authorizes immediate FEMA assistance in Beaufort, Brunswick, Carteret, Craven, New Hanover, Onslow, Pamlico, and Pender counties. We expect to add more counties, and we appreciate the quick, quick turnaround by FEMA. I want to again warn residents of the mountains and the rest of North Carolina, especially the Southern Piedmont. Heavy rain is predicted still. Fayetteville, west to Charlotte, and the mountains. Expect flooding and potential landslides beginning tonight and continuing into Monday. Some of the areas will be impacted that have rarely experienced any flooding. Get prepared and stay alert for forecast updates and emergency evacuation orders. 
Finally, please be safe and be smart and use your common sense. Don't drive through water, no matter how confident you feel or how much you want to get out of the house. Roads are closed in many places, and more are closing even as we speak. Secretary Trogdon will inform you about those closings. But when you're out there, you are impeding emergency vehicles. You're impeding utility crews who are trying to restore power. So don't get out, particularly in southeastern North Carolina. Don't operate a generator indoors. Be alert for warnings and flash floods, tornadoes, high winds. And if you need non-emergency help, dial 211. Those using video relay services should dial 888-892-1162. And the Ready NC app has information about shelters. And I'm also grateful to have Monica McGee to provide American Sign Language interpretation for us. This storm eventually will leave our state. We in North Carolina have been through tough storms. And this one is sure testing us. But now is the time for us to persevere. I have never known North Carolinians to quit in the face of a challenge. And we're not about to start. And speaking of a team that never quits, I'd like to introduce to you some of our team who are working here at the Emergency Operations Center 24-7. They're working around the clock to keep North Carolina safe. I want to introduce to you, uh, to my right, Eric Hooks, our Secretary of Public Safety. Beside him, Mike Sprayberry, our Director of Emergency Management. Beside him, Dr. Mandy Cohen, our Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Resources. Then we have Secretary Jim Trogdon, our Secretary of Transportation. Colonel Glenn McNeil, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, Major General Gregory Lusk of the North Carolina National Guard, Albie Lewis, our FEMA uh, Federal Coordinating Officer, along with Gracia Check, and we have Commander Peggy Britton, Britton of the United States Coast Guard, and uh, Major General Lusk will introduce Lieutenant General Jeffrey Buchanan of the United States Army who is also with us. Now I'm going to turn it over to Director Sprayberry for an update. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. The State Emergency Operations Center continues to operate at a level one. The focus of the team is to surge operational and logistical resources to the impacted counties, which will now be a little bit easier since tropical storm force winds, for the most part, have exited the eastern part of our state. I want to first thank the local partners for their patience as we try to negotiate some of the dangerous roads that have been degraded and, and they even have some debris. So it will take us a little bit of time as we work through those issues. We're also currently engaged in search and rescue operations by boat and by air. Thank you also to our Coast Guard partners. And we have our logistics teams really pushing those commodities out hard. Shelter operations continue to be a top priority for us, and we always want to thank our local partners as well as our universities for stepping up to assist in the sheltering of our fellow North Carolinians as they have sheltered from Hurricane Florence. <laughs> We're also working with our federal partners to develop temporary housing strategies for this event as they transition from shelters uh, to housing once we have that opportunity. I also want to remind everyone as the state continues to experience unprecedented flooding along our coast, and we do anticipate more flooding as it continues to move inland, as the governor said, uh, going west, we want to urge all of our residents to log into our flood inundation mapping and alert network, known as FIMAN, at FIMAN.NC.gov. That's F-I-M-A-N dot N-C dot G-O-V, Feynman.nc.gov. In that site, you can see what roads and structures will be affected by flooding. 
And users can also sign up to be alerted by this system by text or email when the rivers near you will begin to rise. As also, always, let's please make sure that you follow the guidance of your local officials, especially when it comes to reentry, and stay tuned to your local media for guidance so that you can ensure situational awareness. Thank you so much for your support of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Team. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Director Sprayberry. We'll now hear from our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Dr. Mandy Cohen. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. Uh, we are in close contact with hospitals and assisted living facilities in affected areas to, uh, to assess their current status and encourage those that need assistance to co contact their local emergency management officials. We continue to gather information from those facilities regarding their capabilities to deliver services related to staffing and power, food, water, and supplies. So continue to contact local emergency management officials. In terms of medical shelters, we have three that are up in Goldsboro, Clayton, and High Point. All of them have bed availability, with most of the bed availability being in Clayton. And we are evaluating other medical shelter sites at this point. If someone does need to go to a medical shelter, please call local emergency management for a referral there. And then lastly, let me leave you with three safety tips. You continue to hear us say, please do not drive through standing or moving water. This was the number one cause of death in Hurricane Matthew. Please, if you see, uh, see standing water, don't drown, turn around. Second thing to remember is if you are using gas powered generators, make sure you're not using those inside. That the carbon monoxide from those could be poisonous. And then lastly, about as we move through the next phases of the storm, make sure you are throwing away food that may have come into contact with flood or storm waters. Perishable foods that have not been refrigerated properly due to power outages may cause illness. When in doubt, throw it out. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Cohen. Now we have uh, General Jim Trogben, who is our Secretary of the Department of Transportation. Jim. Thank you, Governor. Um, conditions across southern and eastern uh, North Carolina continue to worsen uh, in transportation. Currently, uh, as of this morning, I-40 had to be closed between exit 364 and 369, which is the vicinity of Warsaw. Uh, we're working closely, and the Highway Patrol is out reviewing potential detour routes now. We, we are working to reestablish and establish those detour routes to support our emergency response uh, to eastern North Carolina. Uh, there's numerous counties with the numerous primary roads uh, closed. Almost every county in eastern North Carolina has primary roads closed. Since yesterday, tw almost 12 hours ago, the number has doubled, so it was 30 yesterday, today it is 60. Uh, our efforts today will be focused in priority on these things, maintaining and establishing detours on our critical uh, interstates and facilities to support emergency response, clearance of trees and debris in support of emergency response, prepositioning assets to support future riverine flooding. We are using the products that uh, Director Sprayberry mentioned to determine where we believe our closures will be coming up as flood events uh, progress. And then we'll move to initial clearance of debris from all roadways. I would like to reinforce that roads open today may be closed by this afternoon, so things can change dynamically. I do anticipate tomorrow we'll have a significant increase in the number of roads uh, covered with water. So do not travel east of I-95, south of US-70, uh, because those, those conditions will be extremely hazardous now, will continue to get more hazardous, and those conditions will change rapidly. If you do travel throughout North Carolina, go to the drivenc.gov app. It has the latest information on where road closures, where detours are, uh, and what the current conditions are and travel speed and, and other conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Trockman. Now we'll have the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol, Colonel Glenn McNeil. Colonel McNeil. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. The State Highway Patrol and our DOT partners continue to work from the coast to the Piedmont, responding to help those affected by this storm. 
We continue to see our primary calls for service being trees and power lines blocking roadways, along with the obvious flash flooding of roads. Overnight, our troopers responded to 82 calls for service and 56 collisions within the affected portions of our state. I'm pleased to report of those calls for service and those collisions investigated that none resulted in a fatality. Incidents of downed power lines are being reported to utility companies and monitored to ensure that unsuspected drivers do not cross power lines. The heavy rains that are moving west will inherently bring with them the dangers that we've fa already faced in the sand hills uh, to the eastern portions of our state. Motorists should avoid at all cost traveling through roads that we have closed. Don't drive around barricades, and again, as the governor has stated, do not drive through standing water or rushing water. We have no way of verifying that that road still remains under the rushing water. With the continued and spreading power outages, remember to treat all intersections that do not have power as a four-way stop. Continue to utilize drivenc.gov and avoid calling star HP or 911 for roadway conditions. If you have to travel, please go to this website and verify the route that you plan to take. Because as Secretary Trogdon said, as the governor stated, the road that's open today may not be open tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel McNeil. We'll now hear from Major General Greg Lusk, uh, Commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. General? Hey, good morning, and thank you very much, Governor Cooper. So there has not been any significant changes in the disposition of the, uh, the National Guard forces that are out there arrayed across the entire state from the east all the way to the mountains. The, uh, the only change is, of course, obviously more have been employed in the various life-saving and rescue missions that are ongoing, particularly in the east. That will increase significantly as the storm continues to move west, and we will, uh, I think, see a, a, an increase in the, uh, in the utilization and the application of some of these teams that we already have pre-positioned. Um, it's important to note that while we have folks already pre-positioned and ready to respond all across the state, and uh, we're talking about this historic flooding and impacts to the central and the southern parts of our state, from the sand hills to the Piedmont all the way to the mountains, that uh, indeed, just rest assured, we have we have people ready to reinforce our our local partners and our incident commanders that we're that are surely be calling on them in the future. But it's also important to note that there is a significant amount of resources that are lined up around us, primarily through our Department of Defense and all of our our partners there. They're lining up aviation assets and some of their high water uh, vehicles to help that have fording capabilities, so that indeed we can get into some of these stricken areas. Yesterday, I talked about the Joint Task Force that we stood up under the command and control of our dual status commander, Major General Jim Ernst. And uh, he's over there working with his crew to help coordinate and make sure that we indeed have that command and control and that coordination in place so that we can bring those capabilities to, to bear uh, once the storm passes and conditions allow. But uh, helping him, I'm very happy to, to have Lieutenant General uh, Jeff Buchanan here with us, Joint Forces Land uh, Component Commander, the uh, Department of Defense lead agency, if you will here to help us and he's here to kind of oversee that and ensure that we have that, that, that everything the Department of Defense has to offer for the state and the people of North Carolina that, uh, that is at, indeed at our disposal. So, sir, we're, uh, we're very glad to have you here today and thank you. Thank you, General. We're going to need all these sources, resources to respond and recover from this storm. Now, I'm going to emphasize one more time, you heard the report from Secretary Trogdon and from the commander of the Highway Patrol. Those who've evacuated east may want to go back home right now. Uh, in many ways, conditions are getting worse in the Middle Eastern to Southeastern North Carolina because of the significant flooding. Travel conditions in many ways are getting worse. And when you go back home, then you're getting in the way of emergency responders, relief efforts, utility crews, uh, particularly as we're having a difficult time found, finding routes to the area, the areas that need help. So we ask you to stay off the road. People of North Carolina have been pretty good about that. 
we're going to ask you to continue. And we also are getting a lot of calls from people who want to help. We're grateful to the American Red Cross and for our faith-based groups and our nonprofits that are helping out. If you want to contribute, we have, you can go online to governor.nc.gov or text Florence to 20222. Uh, this relief fund is available uh, to people in North Carolina who need the help. Uh, our whole team now will open it up for questions that you might have. More specifics about this weekend and the places that you are most concerned about regarding historic flooding. Mike, I'll let you. There, it, it's so many places right now that we are concerned. Looking at that flood map today, uh, we have rivers that are rising, the Noose, the Cape Fear, the Lumber River, all across. Mike, I'll let you address. So. Thank you, sir. So the governor's right on target, as you may imagine, that uh, we're looking at places like Lumberton and Robinson County. We're looking at Fayetteville and Cumberland County. Um, we're looking at Lenore County. As the storm moves west and it drops uh, these incredibly high amounts of precipitation, um, there's going to be widespread flooding. Uh, we've called more assets in to uh, prepare ourselves for flooding in the mountains. So it, it's going to be... Basically, anything I would say from the mountains to the coast, from North Carolina, South Carolina border up to around Harnett County, we're seeing significant amounts of rainfall. So we are positioning ourselves with all of our assets to make sure that we can provide an aggressive and decisive uh, response to that amount of rain. So, Feynman.nc.gov, that's F-I-M-A-N dot N-C dot G-O-V. I'm sorry, just one, one follow-up. Uh, particularly about, uh, we see the graphs about Manchester and northern Cumberland County. It seems like, not just historic, but epic. Could, is there any special concern about that area? There is a special concern, and I've been in communication with the assistant county manager from Cumberland County this morning. And he's telling me that they're eyes wide open and they're doing everything they can to make sure that they're prepared. Our email that was sent from the agenda the last couple of days, where we talked about the high concentration of swift water runs, even in the Newborn area. I know you said there has been more of those. Are we still seeing that in Newborn? Are we seeing that in other places now as well? Mike, I'll let you take that. Yes, sir. So the, we are not just in New Bern, but places like Carteret, and you will see that all up and down the, the, the coastline here. And again, as the storm move, moves west, we anticipate we'll be seeing um, more of those types of rescues. I'd like to publicly thank uh, Commander Peggy Britton and her team. Uh, they've been doing aviation rescues. I think, ma'am, you said that there were 18 rescues. 23 as of this minute. Okay, 23. And so there we go. Thank you, ma'am. Andrea Blanford, ABC 11. Governor, we're talking about the track of this storm shifting west and you're concerned about mudslides, landslides, things like that. What's your message to the people who might want to or need to evacuate in the western part of our state? Avoid complacency. A lot of people believe that since this storm is now been downgraded to a tropical storm and then a tropical depression and then it will be a low pressure area that they don't have much to worry about. The rainfall is epic and will continue to be and particularly along the Sand Hills to Charlotte we're going to see areas flood that have not flooded before and so you'll have people who really aren't paying attention to this. I have a real concern about that so we are telling people to go the Feynman map to look, to be aware of local evacuation orders that may come their way, and to be on their toes. And this goes to the people of Western North Carolina. People in Western North Carolina know what heavy rains mean. They have experienced rock slides and mud slides and road closures and damage before. So they know they're all out there how many counties do we have setting up EOCs? 62? It's 89. 
89, 89 emergency operation centers right now. So almost all of North Carolina is on the ready for this. And we just don't want people to think this thing is over because it's not. It's not over really anywhere because even as the storm passes eastern North Carolina, those rivers are going to continue to rise over the next few days and there's going to be significant flooding. You mentioned the closure at I-40 and the difficulty of finding routes. Can you speak to how many resources you're unable to get where they need to go and what sort of impact that's happening? That, that's causing like how many folks and, and other resources that you're unable to move out before you need them? Mike, you want to take that one? So before we send any resources out, you know, first of all, we've got a tremendous amount of resources staged in Kinston. They're already there. And we've also got a lot of resources chopped out to the counties already. They're already in, in operation. So basically, they're already in the area of operation. And before any other additional assets would be moved, we coordinate with our DOT partners who are right here. Um, and we're also looking at uh, our firemen to make sure that we know where uh, the floods are so we understand uh, as you might imagine when we send resources out we we get us uh, a route before we go so that we ensure that we're headed in the right direction although you know could be debris so we have you know chainsaw crews with most of the resources that go out too just to follow up do you feel like you have what you need in place though as opposed to not being able to move really grateful for this joint operation because they're providing high water vehicles that can help us uh, deliver the supplies even in flooded areas. So that's a very important part of this operation. Uh, can you speak to uh, the current situation with coal ash ponds, uh, agricultural dunes, things like that? Is there any risk of flooding of those dunes? Uh, what level are they at at the moment? With that, with the epic flooding, you're going to have risk of flooding those infrastructures. Yes, we're concerned about it. We have our Department of Environmental Quality that is on the ready, in addition to our Environmental Protection Agency partners that are here. Has there been any flooding yet? Are we Do you have any? I don't think we have any reports of any yet, no. Okay. Other questions? Okay, we'll let you know when the next briefing will be. Thank you very much.